Rudy A. Blends back with another haircut tutorial. Now, in this haircut tutorial, we're gonna go straight to it. We're gonna start, we're gonna do a mid drop fade, and we're gonna start by on top of his ear and on the back. As you can see, I'm going it's like a little simple little trick that I like to use uh, when I'm doing my ball guideline on the back. When I'm doing a drop fade, I imagine like I'm doing a taper, like around a high back taper. And then afterwards, then I managed to go all the way back and try to match it between the sides and the back. And then I try, that's why I try to do my first all bald guideline. But as you can see, I am doing a harsh bald guideline. Now, if you want an easier way, you can go ahead and uh, close your clippers all the way and you can start doing your first guideline like that. Now, I like doing with my trimmers, my first guideline, because it seems to be a little bit more faster than, uh, than usual. Uh, now I'm actually using my Bad Blues Pro Foil Shavers and uh, I'm just shaving it pretty simple. I am flicking the wrist. I am mostly uh, using the corners. I know you can't really tell on the shaver, but I am using most of the corners for the shaver. And when I'm going all the way up, I am flicking the wrist. Now using my wall, my wall clippers. I am gonna use be uh, doing my first guideline with the lever halfway open, and I'm going to go to be going around about it one inch. Now, as you can see, I, I did a little design, little cross design, with uh, what my customer wanted. Uh, now, don't be afraid to dig in to do your first guideline. I know, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit more intimidating, but at the end of the day, uh, you. Kind of have to get rid of the fear and just start cutting, cutting the hair. Now we're gonna get slapped over one guard. We're gonna have the lever halfway open, and then we're gonna go about a one inch again. Now I usually do clipper over comb, but uh, on this typical client, uh, since he does like it kind of very short with the green on top, uh, it was kind of pointless for me to do a clipper on the comb on the sides since on the sides you know I, i'm not really going to be cutting a lot because you know when you do clipper over comb and you're cutting horizontal you're not blending you're actually just debulking now when you do a clipper over comb and you're going up towards horizontal then you're actually blending so right now i'm using my two guard for the lever halfway open and i'm going about another inch now, as you can see, like, like this, if I was doing clipper over comb going up like that, now I'm on blending. But if I was using my guards and more go towards, like, towards the side, that would be considered as somewhat of clipper over comb. But now, since for me it was pretty pointless and hard to do clipper over comb on the sides, especially like right there where I'm doing right now, so I did, I actually did a slap at number three, and then I just went up and about another inch. And right now I'm going straight up based on the shape of his head. I'm not really digging in. I don't want to create a line. Uh, you shouldn't be able to create a line with the number threes and fours and fives and go and say etc. and etc. You shouldn't really make a lines. You should be really blending in. Now I am doing clipper overcome on the back as you can see. Boom. Now if you are afraid of doing clipper overcome, what I would suggest is getting the number five guard, number six and just keep going up until you reach whatever length desired length you want for your customer now on the back uh a lot of a lot of barbers like to leave a lot of bulk on the back uh i don't really like that because sometimes it tends to look like a chili bowl but also if you're if the style is like a low fade stuff like that then i, I would leave it you know because basically some low fades like a crop top and stuff like that you know, they're kind of meant to look kind of like a chili bowl, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it just depends on the uh, situation you're in. Now, I am using my one and a half guard. Now, on this haircut tutorial, I am breaking it down pretty simple. Now, like, if you're afraid to go lower and lower with the guards, this is the perfect technique. It does take a little bit longer, but I would suggest doing this technique. Uh... When you're first starting so you can actually feel and learn okay 
okay, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm supposed to do. Okay, I don't have to do this part. I can skip this and then go from there, from there. Uh, just with time and experience, you're able to learn all of that. So what I'm doing right here is I'm pretending like if I'm cutting with the half guard. So what I mean by that. So basically, with the one and a half guard, I'm going close, slightly open, halfway, and then slightly more open than halfway. So it's basically like four steps. Like I said, it takes a little bit longer, but it's very, very efficient. So as you can see, I'm going close, somewhat open, and then halfway, and then almost open. And exact same thing I did with the number one guard. And I'm tacking the line between the half and the one. So that I'm going close, halfway, and then open. And if I still see a line, then I play with the lever. And what I mean by playing with the lever is sometimes you go halfway, or sometimes you go a little bit more than halfway, or a little bit more close than halfway. Basically, you're looking at spots. So if you don't know what you're looking at, when I first started uh, trying to do detail work, I really didn't know what it meant. So basically, you will look at spots. So, for example, if you pass the first guy line with the one guard open and now you skipped it and then now you go into the two guard open. If the one guard open, you did that section of the one guard open and there's a spot that it looks like you didn't even attack it, but on the spot next to it, it looks like it's one guard open. And that means that detail work comes in and then you put that one guard open where it's supposed to be. Now, why did this happen? Number one is sometimes the clipper, we move pretty faster than the clipper is supposed to do its work. Number two, there's a, there's a lot of dents. A lot of customers have dents. Everybody has dents, especially if you're very lean and have a, a lot of uh, muscular, you know, veins, all that, and have like no fat at all. Oh, you gonna have a lot of dents because nobody's head is perfectly round like that. You're, you're like kind of on the back of the heads where like meat comes in like a little bit of fat so basically if you're like too lean as you know i guess you can say that uh you're gonna have dents because nobody's head is perfectly round in shape so moving forward i am now using with the half guard and i'm doing the exact same thing close halfway and then open and on some spots i did close somewhat close halfway and then somewhat all the way open so it's basically four steps now uh, i would recommend for beginner barbers you know the Baptist pro clipper since it does have the notches man it's very very accurate to see where you're coming from how where exactly is halfway and where exactly is not now on this step i don't do this step i do not usually get my trimmers and attack the bottom line but for some reason there's always this specific client that once i start leaving the bald line with uh, his type of hair texture it always leaves a line i don't know why I, I don't know sometimes i even go lighter and I, it still leaves a line so i'm always forced to come back with the trimmers and then uh, try to blend it in a bit afterwards but since i i do get lost if i do it afterwards so i just do it before so I just attack the bottom line with the trimmers and then afterwards I see a slight line. You might not be able to see it. I see a slight line. Then I get my clippers and then I start blending them from there. Now now I did switch to my uh, Babless Pro Clippers with this taper blade. Uh, I am just playing with the lever. Basically going close, halfway and then open. And there's some spots that uh, he did have a lot of uh, minor mini patches on his head. Which typically like everybody does, as you can see right there by the uh, um, up forward of the cross. He has little, little, you know, little ball spots in there. You know, looks like everybody has little ball spots. And I'm just playing with the lever. Now that's when my detail work comes in, you know, do it as best you can. Try to blend in that ball spot to pretend like it's not even a ball spot, it's part of the fade. And that's when uh, most barbers and most, uh, your skills come in.
Now, when you're doing detail work, you should only use the corners. You shouldn't use the whole blade. Now, what do I mean by that? So let's say uh, right there in that spot that I'm attacking right now, let's say I use a whole blade. Instead of blending, I'm gonna go ahead and set a whole guideline. You know what I'm saying? So then you're gonna have to start over again and then you're gonna have to bring the fade even higher which that is a big no-no so right there i'm using the uh, just doing a little bit of detail work as you can see right there on the right of his head wow he had a big very light spot and i'm like dang i'm gonna need to have to blend that in to cover that in so it won't look as, it won't look as, as bad you know what i mean now uh everybody has patches i specifically have patches behind my ear <laughs> and uh it's basically up to the artist the barber to try to blend it in as much as you can you know what i mean now if you're afraid to uh, use corn cutting technique then just go ahead and get a bigger guard and try to blend in now the corner corner cutting technique uh you basically get whatever if you feel like you're missing a spot with a number two guard and you want to attack it with the half guard so instead of going up like a regular going up you will tilt the blade the blade almost 90 degrees and you go straight up and that's how you start your corner cutting technique which is kind of like blending that is a very powerful tool especially when doing compressed fades it's phenomenal and as you can see in the back, by the, by the cross, there's a little line right there. Boom, I'm starting to talk, uh, attacking it right now as much as I can. Uh, there's been occasions that sometimes I'm like, man, you know, I feel like I can attack this with the half guard. But, you know, I'm going to try with the, with the one guard because sometimes I do be scared. Because sometimes I do take longer than usual on hair textures, especially on, on very thin hair. I try to take... Uh, I try to take more more time because sometimes I slap the one guard open and, and then it turns it looks like I just put the lever halfway. But with consistency, you know, all your fades with my technique can help you look your face like this. My name is Rudy A Blends. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and make sure you like and subscribe. Stay blessed.